eat, Phil. So I was wondering if you could help me with an experiment. I want to generate as much electricity with human power. What do you think? I think that sounds awesome. Okay, great. Let's go back to Science Max headquarters. Is that the portal? Yeah. Don't worry, all the kinks are worked out. What it is. It's this. Uh, where did you end up? I was in the vents. Oh, I ended up in the bathroom. All right, well, now that we're here. Okay, so this is what I started with, and this is uh, just, you know, an electric motor, right? Right. right. Um, so you can generate electricity, you spin it, so I figured in order to generate more electricity, you get a bigger generator? Exactly, yeah. The bigger the generator, the bigger the magnet, the more the copper, the more the electricity. Oh, uh, well, you know what we should do is we should just get an even bigger one, like a giant one that they use in like at a power plant or something, or? Mm, not quite. That would be too big for a person to be able to turn. It'd just oh. be impossible. So you think this is a good size? I think this is a great size. Okay, so that's that's good. This is called a multimeter. We're gonna hook up the wires. I'll do black to uh, black. Black to black. To red. And as you turn our generator, we can see just how much electricity we're, we're generating. Okay, so. Here, you hold on to that. This, and, and I'll can turn start the turning. generator. Now it's time to play How Much Electricity Did They Make? 2.4 volts, yeah, it's not it's, bad. Oh, 2.4, yeah, it's not great. That's just enough to power a small LED flashlight. Better keep trying, boys. I got some handles here that we're going to attach ah, to the perfect. end of the generator so yeah. we can spin it. Okay, let's try. Huh? No matter how fast I crank the large handle, I couldn't make any more electricity than before. Okay, let's um, try something else. I, I bet it's a smaller handle. Perfect, okay, that's, yeah. That's good? Yeah, well, maybe it'll let us get more spins in. Oh right. yeah, because I don't have to make as big a circle. Exactly. Yeah, it's working already. We're up to like 3.5. Now, how much electricity is Phil making? 4.5. That's the same as three AA batteries. Maybe enough to power a toy car. Still a long way to go. Yeah, it's, it's a lot higher with the faster spins. Oh, all right, all right, you, you okay? I'm okay. Maybe we could use like some gears or something like that. Oh yes, you know that's a good idea because the the this circle that I'm making here, I can only go so fast. So yeah. Maybe with gears you can do one circle here equals like ten circles on the other gear. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, so kind of like the like the gears on on like a, on like a bike. Yeah, the gears on a bike or something like that. A bike, a bike. of course. Oh. Yeah. So okay, so we get a bike and we attach the back tire to. The generator. The generator, and then you can use the pedals of the big gear to power the small gears. Okay, great. Right. We'll go get a bike. Yeah. Yeah, high five. Uh, All, right. All right. Oh, right, they're over here. Everything has a resonance, a note that it vibrates best at. Let's say this fish tank is, well, any container where sound would be vibrating, and the waves of water are actually waves of sound. Now, normally, sound waves will bounce around inside the container, off the walls, and go back and forth like that. And how fast I move this piece of wood is the frequency or the note that we're playing. I could vibrate this wood very fast and make a high note. I could move this plank very slow and make a low note. And the waves just bounce around inside the container. But there's a speed I can move this plank where the waves stop going side to side and suddenly get twice as big. The waves bouncing off the sides of the tank are meeting the waves going in the other direction. But what we end up seeing is peaks of the waves not moving side to side, just going up and down, like you see here. This is the resonant frequency of this container. So, let's max this out. Say I have a wine glass, and I wet my finger, and I rub it around the rim. It vibrates at a certain note. That note is the resonant frequency of this wine glass. So what would happen if we were to play that note back to this wine glass really, really loud? And yes, this is something you should not try at home. This note makes the glass vibrate the most. Finding the perfect note things vibrate best at is great for musical instruments, but it's not great for this wine glass. The sound waves are causing the glass to vibrate a lot. And because this glass is delicate, it can only vibrate so much before it breaks.
the vibrations were so strong that the glass literally shook itself to pieces. <laughs> Science! Sorry. Science! Oh, wait. Science! Hey, Anna, I... Huh? I feel weird. Why do I feel weird? I think you're a chair. Well, that's not good. Oh, hold on a second. Am I... Am I good? Okay. Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Here's your lab coat. Thank you. So you're from Let's Talk Science, right? I am. All about science education, just like us. Today, I need your help to max out our earthquake table. This is the table this looks part, great. obviously, but this is a tower I've made out of popsicle sticks. Yeah. So in order to max it out, I've already built a large shaker table. Come on. This is my large shaker table. So it's got basketballs underneath as the floor balls, but it works exactly the same. Whoa. 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 <laughs> okay, so what kind of tower should we make for the shaker table? If we want something tall, then we'll reinforce it a couple spots. But the true test, it's got to have some sort of weight on top so that it will mimic the weight that would be on a real tower. Right, so maybe I could get a plastic bin and I'll just put some sandbags for weight inside. That would be perfect. And then balls so that when it falls over, the balls will go everywhere. That would be perfect. Okay, great. We shake off. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think we should just get off. Chris and I are maxing out the Vibrobot, but our last version shook itself apart. Now the plan is to start with something more solid and try again. We found some very solid steps and added an even bigger motor, an even bigger battery, and attached a half circle wheel to make the vibrations when the motor spins. We add some paintbrushes and fire it up. Here we go. Come on. Go, Vibrobot. Hmm. It wants to move. Is it moving at all? Hmm. Hmm. So it's still not working. It's sort of getting caught in the paper, and it's on the paintbrushes. And the, yeah, the paintbrushes seem to be absorbing too much vibration, and then the paper's stopping it as well. So why don't we remove the paintbrushes? Yeah. And we might as well remove the paper if we don't have any more paintbrushes. Yes. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. No paintbrushes, no paper. Okay. Now let's try it. Three, two, one, go! Yeah! Aha! It's moving. Not bad. The shaking is good, but I don't know if the shaking is enough. So what do we do? Well, we could add another battery. Another battery, which would give it more power? That's right. OK, let's try that. OK. OK, so it wasn't working before. No. Not enough power. And now we've got a second battery here. That's right. We've wired them up so that one power feeds into the other, so we've got twice as much juice as we do. So it's just a matter of clipping this onto there. That's right. But hold on. Yeah, safety glasses, because now we don't know what's going to happen <laughs> anymore. Ready? Three, two, one. The extra battery makes a big difference. The new Vibrobot shakes around and only shakes itself apart a little. All right, Whoa. that was amazing. <laughs> okay, so all we needed was more power. That's right, I think it didn't have enough power to, to vibrate up and down and that's why it wasn't moving every time it hit the ground. So I think if we're gonna use this much power, I think we need to build it again. Okay. Build it even stronger and with a bigger motor. Yeah. And more power. And then maybe I ride it. <laughs> Do you think we can build that? Of course. Of course. Okay, let's do it. Vibration and frequency. What's the difference? They're all connected. Ta-da! Now we get, whoa. Wow. Vibration is things going back and forth. Back and forth. And back and forth. It's a cycle. Cycle, 25 bucks. Oh yeah, it's the wrong kind of cycle, never mind. Well, if that's vibration, then what's frequency? Well, frequency is a measure of how fast or slow, how frequent those vibrations happen. Look at this bowling ball. It is swinging back and forth, but not very fast. You could say it has a low frequency. We measure all kinds of things by the frequency. This thing is terrifying. When you turn the dial on your radio, you're tuning in to different frequencies of radio waves. Hey, 
Hey, look at this punching balloon. It's going very fast. You could say it has a high frequency. <laughs> so, now you know. Vibration is something going back and forth, and frequency is how quickly it does it. <laughs> Ramona, the bowling ball keeps coming through everything. How do you turn it off? Okay, back to our main experiment. Chris and I are taking a Vibrobot and maxing it out. We have a large motor and a battery, and we're taping it all to some shelving. Just like our small Vibrobot, our motor needs something to make it unbalanced when it spins. That's what will cause the vibrations. It's just taped. I haven't attached it in any other way. Do you think that's okay? As an engineer, I have superior faith in duct tape. Okay, well, that, that's good to know. We're also adding an on-off switch and some paintbrushes on the bottoms of the legs so our maxed-out Vibrobot can make art just like the small one. The final step, dipping the brushes in paint and setting it on a big piece of paper. We fire it up and it immediately shakes everything off the shelves. Oh! It, it totally spilled all the stuff on the shelves. The motor shakes the Vibrobot a lot, but there's a problem. All that shaking is starting to take its toll on the shelves. The wheels come off, the screws come out, and finally... Whoa! <laughs> whoa, yeah, yeah. whoa, whoa. It totally shook it itself apart. Destroyed itself. The shelving unit just completely falls apart when it's being shaken. Vibration is really hard on the structure of an object. We need something more sturdy, something that can, that can take weight. Steps, maybe? Yeah. OK, hold on. OK. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this looks much better. Okay, great. So we build the new Vibrobot out of this. So more paint brushes, bigger motor, more paint, more everything. More everything. All right, good. 